Cornell West has obviously opted to run for president on the People's Party ticket. And a lot of people thought, well, why couldn't he have just run as a green because they already have ballot access? Wouldn't this be so much easier? And the answer is, to a large extent, obviously, yes, it would be. Uh, however, uh, here is the standard bearer currently for the Green Party, uh, 2020 Green Party nominee, Howie Hawkins, who fared absolutely miserably in the 2020 race. Here's a tweet of his from a few days ago that went somewhat viral because now that the Green Party's in the conversation, they're being vetted a little more seriously. He puts up this tweet. Some in the peace movement call for a ceasefire in negotiations by U.S.-led Western imperialists with Russian imperialists to carve up Ukraine between them and call it peace. Stop pressuring Ukraine to accept partition. Sign this petition. So he literally links to a petition discouraging Ukraine to agree to peace talks. This is the Green Party standard bearer? This was the former Green Party nominee. Uh, this is the organization that we're supposed to lend some credibility to as a left movement. You can't even get this right. The Greens are to the right of many Republicans on this issue if this guy represents them. Like, if this guy is not expelled from the party at this point, if this guy is not driven out of town for this, then how can the Greens, Russell, I don't know if you want to get your sound drop ready again, but how can you not tell the Greens? You have it? Yep. Good. I love you, but you are not serious people. What the fuck kind of left-wing organization has someone as prominent as Howie Hawkins is within that organization fire off a tweet literally passing around a petition to discourage peace talks <laughs> between Russia and Ukraine? How basic is that? How easy is that you whiff on that that's just extraordinary well especially the whole logic of it um so unless you're the big dog in the fight you're not an imperialist like you don't have imperialist aligned interests because you're the you're the smaller one between the two dogs fighting over the bone like you're not this was the most corrupt nation in Europe before this war. The money that we're pouring in there is disappearing and they won't allow an audit. When people started talking about an audit, there was tremendous pushback from Ukraine. We have reports from Cy Hirsch about generals driving around in uh, BMWs and taking luxury vacations and then, you know, having fights with Zelensky about how the money is going to be split up. What did you think was going to happen when you poured hundreds of millions of dollars into the most corrupt country in Europe? And now you have uh, the New York Times actually admitting that, you know, yeah, they're fond of, uh, you know, swastikas, right? You know, they're framing it in their special way. But uh, even they're having to admit that there are Nazis right. <laughs> in the front lines of the Ukrainian military. Uh, but they're like an innocent party. And, and, and this framing is very much the kind of framing that you get from real Ukraine supporters, right? That they are this innocent democracy that's being, uh, you know, oppressed and I mean, yes, as far as it goes, um, but at the same time, you know, we, we had that interesting person uh, call in last week who was a Ukrainian Russian. Yeah, Stanislav, yeah. Yeah, there are these Ukrainian Russians, and this is what the gray zone has been reporting since before there was a war, that the Ukrainians Correct. were shelling these people in the east who consider themselves Russian. Right. It's not it's it's oh, what's the word complicated? It's a complicated fucking situation. It's not as simple as, you know, Russia, Russian imperialism. There are these people in the East who would probably rather be a part of Russia. Well, look, so, the imperialism are, so are there are their rights being violated by being forced <laughs> to remain a part of Ukraine? Sure thing. And on the question of imperialism, I would say it's not even close in that score. I mean, look. I'm anti-war. I'm against all war. War is hell. War is vulgar. 
war is an offense to the human race. And so I do not support any war anywhere. Um, but on a, but, but in terms of imperialism, um, Russia still to this day does not want their flag flying over Kiev. R- Russia didn't even want Ukraine. Russia had three demands, independence for the separatist regions, Crimea, which they had already annexed and recognized as theirs, um, and they wanted, obviously, Ukraine to stay out of NATO. So you tell me who the imperialists are. The imperialists are the forces who have pushed NATO expansion far beyond where they initially promised to, and now are pressuring Ukraine. Not one inch east. Right, not one inch east. Went back on that promise decades ago, and now they come Pretty to much Ukraine in 2021. Yes, exactly. In uh, 2021, November, and tell the Ukrainian government, hey, maybe you should join NATO. Who are the imperialists there? The Russians aren't even trying to take over Ukraine. They don't even want the country. So how can you say they're, How can you say this is a war of imperialism on their part? It's a hostile act. I thought it was an extreme act. Like I said, I'm for diplomacy everywhere in all directions. I'm not defending it, certainly. Mm -hmm. But you can't say it's Western imperialism on one hand, Russian imperialism on the other hand. Russia doesn't even want to take over the neighboring country. They just wanted those three things. Those demands could have been met. Those demands eventually will be met. That's what Jeremy Corbyn said at the start of the war. All wars end in diplomacy eventually. Right now, diplomacy looks different because people's hands change throughout the war. Right. But they all end with people agreeing to stop the fighting. So why don't we just skip the fighting part and get right to the talking part? And not only that, nobody ever talks about this, but uh, Boris Johnson was over there with a peace plan. We were only a few months into the war that apparently both Zelensky and Putin were open to, but we were not. Because it did not serve U.S. Right. interests. Exactly. When you, when you look at just the level of of deception and disregard for human life, it's it's just it's almost difficult to contemplate being so evil that you would want to destroy this country and drag out this war uh, for the profit of defense contractors and to play out some game of real politic where the United States gets to stave off the uh, decline of its empire at Russia and China's expense. Please clap. 